hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to Backstage Bimbo TV. My name is Allison Rouse, your most notorious groupie, and author of We've Got Tonight, The Life and Times of Notorious Groupie, me. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much for all the love and support that everybody's been giving me, especially lately. If you're on my personal Facebook page, you know some of the crazy stuff that's going on. So... Thank you so much to everybody that's supporting me and just having my back. I cannot tell you how much I love and appreciate you guys. And welcome back. And for those of you who are just, you know, sneaking on from time to time or stum stumbling across, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. I've got a lot of good stories here. And I've got a lot of good stories today on this cocktail and rock tale. And we're going to traverse outside of rock and roll to a band that I loved from the time I was like, what, 12 years old, I think? from the first time I heard him, but again, thought that lead singer was just gay. Unfortunately for the gay guys, he's not. Fortunately for me, mm, Dave Gohan was not gay, so we are going to be talking about some Depeche Mode. Here's my pass from the day we're talking about. It does say local crew, but that doesn't mean I was working on the local crew, because we know groupies just sit around and look pretty. No, we do more than that, but we definitely don't work local crew or any crew. So, anyway. All right, and the cocktail for the, today is going to be the Fuck Me Sideways, because mm, Dave Gahan, we'll talk about that in a minute. Mm, mm. All right, folks, so kick up your heels, get fucked sideways, and let's have some cocktails and rocktails, shall we, folks? Whee! Cheers, big ears. Okay, so this was probably around 92, 93. I totally suck at the years, but I'm pretty good at remembering each command. Surprisingly enough, for as many as I've had, mm, shock of well, there has been a couple I forgot about. So anyway, but nobody can ever forget about Dave Gahan because and this is heroin Dave Gahan towards the end of his heroin addiction but the beginning of my stripper career now Depeche Mode was playing Salt Lake City but were in town the night before the gig well the night before the gig just happened to be the big statewide competition to go to the two spots from Utah for the Miss World Topless which I talked about in my vlog about my stripping career earlier put the link down in the, in the description, but, so, this was my first Miss World Topless that I was going to, and didn't like guys coming in my strip club that I knew outside of the club, it wasn't my thing, not really into the musician I'm sleeping with and the road crew seeing, seeing me all naked, I just want the guy I'm sleeping with to see me naked, so, the guys knew where I work, I told them I'll stop by when I get off. No, I'm getting ready to go on stage, and I happen to look out, and there's a couple roadies that I know. There's Dave Gahan and a few other guys. One from the, the, the opening band and stuff, but yeah. So, gets me extra nervous because I don't like dancing in front of people that I know outside of the club. It's just something I always kept separate. So, it makes me extra, extra nervous. So, I go up. I do my big set, which was to uh, a couple of things from the Lost Boys soundtrack, and first stripper to bring a coffin on stage and do the foot cable, so I was lifting out of the coffin, but anyway, so do the competition, they're all sitting out of the crowd, they're like, woo, cool, whatever. Brandy and I win the two spots, as expected, to go to Las Vegas. So we're going to go, I'm going with my friends, I'm bringing a couple girls with me, we're going to go party and celebrate with Dave Gahan, my roadie friends, a couple guys from the that. Cool. I know now that Dave Gahan is not gay. So we know what my agenda was for the night. Because even heroin Dave, like, now Dave has an amazing body. Oh, he works beautifully. Oh, it's a beautiful body. And even back then on, on heroin Dave, he had the cutest little butt. Just, just cutest little butt. Just bony little cute butt. Like, I could just smack the butt. Hey, daddy. Oh, yeah, I smacked that butt. But, 
we're not good. We'll get into sexier Dave later. But this Dave, he said, heroin Dave, still so sweet, like very talkative, actually a lot funnier than I expected. But while we're all hanging out on the bus, doing shots of Jaeger, partying, having a cigarette, whatever, after the after my gig, um, oddly enough, they watched me on stage. Yeah, we were hanging out after my gig. So Dave was getting a little bit antsy. You know, while we're on the bus, we're sitting next to each other. We're playing touchy feely. He's got, and I'm going to put a link down to a video that I like to watch when I'm feeling lonely and batteries are involved. So, and you'll see why. And when I talk about this, the second, he, Dave does this thing with his fingers. Like if he's got his hand on your thigh, he'll do this like just his little middle finger. And it's just so, like, subtly erotic and, like, the way it just tickles and that's, like, the second you know. Oh, bagged and tagged, both of us. He just tagged me. I just bagged him. Cool beans. So he does that, but he's getting kind of fidgety. And, really, he was my very first experience with someone who was an active heroin user that actually did it in front of me. I come from the 80s where it was all cocaine and weed and cocaine was never my thing I did it a few times heroin was heroin was definitely not my thing as we've heard from the first Dave Mustaine video so you know he's getting antsy getting antsy and he's and you know we're all kind of getting tired it's like three o'clock in the morning so he's like you want to go upstairs you know I'm like yeah of course I do of course I do I'd love to celebrate even more he's like oh yeah He's like, well, Papa Quokka too. So, yeah, we were. So, but he's like, could you give me 10 minutes? He's like, just wait in the hotel bar, you know, because we had just come out of the hotel bar and we're waiting right outside of it talking. And he's like, just wait with, you know, Borga, whoever, you know, that we were down there. He's like, just give me 10 minutes. Went to the front desk, got the extra key for me, waited the 10 minutes. And like I said, I, I wasn't real... I was naive to a heroin user, what it was really like. So the fidgety was kind of explained to me that yes, he's probably going to go up and shoot up. So be careful when you go up there. This is what you may, may expect. Ugh. And I don't talk about this in the book because I just, you know, I tried not to downgrade the musicians as, as you know I'm already saying some of them suck in bed I think that's being harsh enough <laughs> so but I'm not saying Dave Gahan sucked in bed so I'm going to talk about this because you know it'll balance so I go up I kind of knock on the door put the key in walk into the room the bathroom I can see the doors shut but not all the way so it's not locked and I go into the living room area where this and there's a suite the bedroom suite over here I waited about 15 or 20 minutes and I was just like, I kind of tapped on the, on the bathroom door. I'm like, Hey, it's Allison. I'm like, I'm here, honey. And he was like, okay, okay. All right. I'll be out. And it was very slow talking. Like I can't even really mimic it because it was just like, yeah, I, I can't mimic it. I can't. But so went out, the TV was on. There was a bottle of wine, was pouring a little bit more wine, whatever. Time's going by. I had waited like 15, 20 minutes before I went and kind of knocked on the bathroom door again. And he was like, uh, and just, and I was like, fuck, great. Great. Well, there goes my sussy, sussy night. But no, that didn't happen. But so I go in. Because I'm knowing, you know, that he's kind of slurring his words. He's not able to form a word. Things are probably not looking great in this bathroom. So, go in the bathroom, and he's he is kind of slumped over. He's nodding in and out. Comprehensive, but not real comp comprehending, you know. He knows who I am, but he's not comprehending that his whole body is limp as a noodle at the moment. He's still trying to be Dave Schwagger, but not being Dave Schwagger outwardly only in his mind 
So I pick him up. I'm like, hey, why don't you put your arm around me? You know, get up because groupies, we know how to take care of our man. I've already dealt with the really drunk James Hatfield and several other musicians at this point. So I pick him up off the toilet. His gear was on the floor. Yeah, I remember the needle in the little case and the gear and stuff just being on the floor next to the toilet. First time I saw used gear like that too, I was just like, whoa, this is real. This is some real shit here. So we go out to the uh, bed, to the sitting area, and I take him onto the couch, and we just sort of sit in the couch, and I'm sort of brushing his hair back. He just falls back, like his head falls back onto the back of the couch, and he still has his arm around me, and he kind of is pulling me closer. He's like, I'll be fine. Just 10. Ten minutes. That's all you need. Ten minutes. So okay. So I'm just sort of brushing his hair. You know, kind of watching him because, like I said, I I've, I feel like I've got to keep my eyes open because you never know what a heroin overdose looks like. I didn't know at the time what a heroin a heroin overdose looked like. So I was trying to keep my eyes open and just kind of talking. And he just sort of rolled over and started kissing my neck, and it was. Still the Dave that I was kissing down before the heroin haze that he was in at the moment. I was enjoying it. And sure enough, sure enough, 10 minutes, something happened and he just snapped up. Not like dancing crazy, just like he was already kind of leaning. Like I said, his body was kind of like very relaxed, wet noodly. So... His arm was just sort of draped over, and he was just sort of on my neck. Then all of a sudden, it was just like, vroom. Here came Dave the man was back from the bus. The guy that was, you know, scooting close, being aggressive, respectfully aggressive, you know, making it quite known, being flirty, being touchy. And you could feel the strength of the man behind his body. All of a sudden, wet noodle Dave just was gone. Just gone. And here was ready to fuck, make out, go down, push me up. And he did. He, like, jumped up off the couch. Not like crazy jump, but just jumped up off, off the couch, grabbed my hands, and just pulled me, just grabbed both my butt cheeks and started kissing. Mmm. He's such a good kisser. Oh, I love just, mmm. Even Heroin Dave, like, like I said, I'll put a video down on the link of my favorite... Dave porn because it's let's face it it's porn to me so and you'll see the difference between sober Dave and heroin Dave but they were both like and oh my god when you see this video you watch him move and you watch him run his this finger and he does it in the video and it's like the second he does that up against your leg and pushes you up against the wall Holy Mother, Mary, Jesus of God, the eyes are already rolling in the back of the head. Mm. Mm. Yeah, he pushed me up against that wall behind the couch. Like, the bedroom was over there, and we didn't even make it to the bedroom. He just, and he went, was kissing and just basically ripped the dress, because I was just wearing this long black, you know, figure hugging, figure hugging, hugging dress with these little witchy boots and he just pulled that dress down I wasn't wearing anything underneath it just the dress and the boots with these cute little heels I loved those boots they were so cute but yeah just push me up against that wall oh my god went pulled that dress down and just slowly worked his way down like <sighs> mm. You'll see in the video, a lot of what he was doing up against, uh, to me up against that wall was being done in the video. He'll do in the video, you know, because we watch musicians on stage and when they're playing that guitar just into it and making that, or hitting that note and maintaining, that's their O face. All the way. Mm-hmm. So, and he didn't shoot up the rest of the night because after we get done just massacring the sitting area of the suite because we massacred it like there was pillows knocked off the couch we knocked the tv off the stand 
the dresser thingy. Oh, God, I think we broke a couple of the, of the hotel glasses. I don't know, but that man was just picking me up. Like, the, he had me up against the wall, wrapped my legs around him, and just would pick me up and go. And it, that's even skinny little heroin, Dave. I was like, Jesus Christ. And I was skinny and stuff, so it's, it wasn't like, but I'm solid muscle, so. <sighs> yeah. Wrecked that living room area proper, like. So we get some water. I had joints with me. We we're smoking a joint. And. He was like, do you care if I, and I was like, yeah, because this is a few hours later, so he's probably needing another fix. And I said, well, if you're going to do that, then I'm, you know, once I know you're okay, you care if I go home. He was like, what? I was like, because I, I just, I can't deal with that, that the heroin whirlpool or whatever you're going down into, that sinkhole. And he was like, oh. You don't, he's like, well, I think I can wait. And I was like, would you rather me stay? He's like, yeah. So he didn't shoot up the rest of the night. You could tell by the morning. I mean, he was very restless the rest of the night. But that kind of worked into my advantage because the more restless he became, the more he took it out on me and my body. And trust me, that man can do whatever he wants to me and my body because he is that fucking good. Mm. That man could spend an hour. No need to push that head. You just throw your hands up, let your head hang off the side of the bed, and <laughs> just, yeah, baby. All right, so that's the first night I met Dave Gahan. So we went to the show the next night. We hung out. When I left the next morning, we were going to order some breakfast, but, you know, when you have a heroin habit, food isn't your priority. And I could tell he was getting really fidgety, and he was like, well, I know it makes you uncomfortable, so I really don't want to do this heroin in front of you. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to go, you know, I'll see what time you're getting, do you want me to meet you at the gig, blah, blah, blah. Went to the gig, watched a show, and an amazing show, absolutely love it. Love, whoops. Yeah, so after the show with Dave Gahan, we just went back to the hotel. We wrecked the bathroom this time. Because he did shoot up after the gig. I met him up there 10 minutes later. He was, I gave him 15 actually, because I figured that extra five might be, you know, have him ready to go. And yep. Ready to go. The second I walked in that door, he pushed me up against the wall. I mean, literally was standing, like heard me come in, just ran to that door, pushed me up against the wall, and blam. Mm -hmm. Rolled into the bathroom. At the time, there was shower curtains. We definitely broke that shower curtain. I hit my head on the other side of the shower wall. We weren't taking a shower. It was just the way I was bent over. Yep. Mm. Dave Gahan. And I've probably already posted this video, so you guys know Dave Gahan is probably one of the best fucks, if not the, he is the best rock fuck I've ever had in my life. Most amazing lover. I mean, seriously, like, he devours a woman. Just, when he, oh my God, he's amazing in bed. And yeah, he can do mad head. Mad. Just, yep, Dave Gahan's the best fuck, so because I've already probably posted the video about the top 10 lovers and the top worst lovers. Dave Gahan's number one so far. There's always room to top him. That's a challenge, boys. All right. So there you guys go. First night I met Dave Gahan wouldn't be the last time I saw him. But we'll talk about that in another vlog. But yeah, ladies, if you ever have the chance, you're gonna have to get through me to get to Dave gone because that means he's divorced and I'm gonna I'm gonna go yeah yeah I'm all over that like white on rice but no I'm kidding if you ever have the chance go for it more than two thumbs up and if you ever see his pinky mm -hmm, he's one of those unusually long pinkies and let me tell you I'll tell you about that over at patreon all right guys thanks for tuning in again thanks for everybody who's already subscribed don't forget to hit that like button because YouTube does care about the likes. So let's get me spread out there more. 
like my legs in the 80s. <laughs> All right. And, oh, and Amazon, it's probably out by now because I, I film a lot of these. So just found out it's, uh, it's mid-September 16th right now. Amazon finally has a hard copy. So I will have a hardcover for my book, you guys. And I'm going to set up a way. I'm going to set up an um, Amazon lockers that we have so that you can uh, send me the book. I can autograph it and I can send it back to you guys. So I'm so excited. I'm creating a new cover as we speak. It's going to be brand new. Hopefully something you haven't seen before. So, all right, guys. Thank you for tuning in to this week's Cocktails and Rocktails about my greatest fuck ever, Dave Gahan. Tune in next week, folks. See you on the flip side. Don't forget to hit the like button, hit the subscribe, hit my bells. See you for more Cocktails and Rocktails. <laughs>